As a boy growing up in the adjacent Pitwick Gap, the precincts of Kensington Oval may have seemed the world away for deceased Barbados and West Indies batsman Sir Everton Weeks because of the limitations presented by prejudice and privilege. On Thursday, Barbadians from all walks of life assembled at the famous ground in the grandstand bearing his name and of deceased fellow Barbadian knights Sir Frank Worrell and Sir Clyde Walcott, the famous three W's. They came to pay their final respects to a man that had truly overcome his circumstances to rise to the pinnacle and become the first Barbadian to be recognized around the world as the best in his chosen endeavor. Well, I, I'm lucky enough to be in a position where you can call him a, a, a good friend, associate, whatever the case may be. We've had verbal interaction, um, speaking about music, speaking about my, my passion, cricket toy collection, speaking about cricket as well. You know, he, he's a, minute, a tremendous asset to me. Um, as a coach, um, never interacted with him much when he was a player, and, and unfortunately so. But um, he was a tremendous asset, and to me, this is a very sad, sad day and, and, and sad passing of a great man. Well, I don't think words can really put into context what Everton has done for Barbados, for this region, and for world cricket. Um, everybody knows he was an exceptional player, part of the famous three Ws. But apart from that, he was a great humanitarian. Um, I loved the man. He was my neighbour. And I knew him from the time I was even playing in England. When I came back to Barbados, he's been very supportive. And as you know, every single year that I've run for the board, he has been the one who's, who has proposed me for the board. Um, I, you know, go and see him on a regular basis. You know, his words of wisdom. I mean, it's a great loss for Barbados. It's a great loss for the, for the Caribbean region. And really, it's a great loss for the world, not just in cricketing terms, but as a human being. I mean, Everton Weeks, as you know, we also have the Everton Weeks Centre of Excellence here named after him. And we didn't wait till he gone to the, the great beyond before that happened. It, it happened years, some 12 years ago, when they had the wisdom here at the BCA to name the centre after him. Really a fitting tribute because he has contributed so much to this small island, this very, very small island of Barbados and to the entire Caribbean region. So it's a sad day for us, for me personally. It's a sad day for everybody really in Barbados. But, you know, he's gone home and um, I'm sure one day we'll all be there. So until we get there, Everton, rest in peace. I think Sir Everton's contribution to the entire Caribbean civilization was that he set a standard of excellence that ensured generations to come would see that their station in life, where they were born, where they came from, the circumstances that they may have grown in, did not limit what they could achieve. This is a man who was born a stone throw away from here in Pitwick Gap, in, in, in circumstances where he could not play for the Pitwick Club here at Kensington Oval because of the social economic restrictions on black people at that time. But he became the first Barbadian to become the best at anything in the world. He did so on two occasions, becoming the world's best batsman. And that is the standard to which all Barbadians, all Caribbean people could aspire to. And therefore, he has always represented a standard of excellence throughout his entire playing career. And even after he played cricket, he extolled those virtues of excellence. Of, of, he was a perfect gentleman. He never said a bad word about any, anyone. He, you know, he was just a very pleasant man to be around, and we were very fortunate to have had Severton as one of the distinguished Caribbean sons coming from Barbados. My association with Severton goes back to my days at the Boys Foundation School when he was the, the coach. And later on in life, um, when I played for the Barbados Colts against Australia, um, one would remember Severton came out of retirement to captain that team. And I remember we had lost about three or four wickets quite early. I was supposed to be the next batsman in. And he just turned to me and said, little man, I will take it. And Severin scored 100, 108. And when he came back in, he says, the legs are not going to carry me any further. You will now go in. But then we have had interactions over the years um, when he was a consultant at the National Sports Council when I was there as director of sport and all, all the time we have had great um, conversations up until a few months ago when he would have been here at Kensington Oval. Maybe all of us will come to cricket and we will talk about 
life, about cricket, about everything else. So my, my association with him is it's a long one and pleasant, very pleasant memories of Severton. He, he was a really a human being um, who had time for people and always offering advice to ensure that we walk the straight and narrow. And he would surely be missing. He was he made a great, great contribution to Barbados and West Indies cricket. He was actually my coach too at the law school. So he was working with the National Sports Council from way back. And of course, not only law school, but all the schools he did. And um, I remember, I can, I can tell you about his approach to coaching, how he made it simple. And um, especially with me, he gave me breaks because he used to come on the days we had cadets. And then I could only get to cricket after cadets. And the cadet man wasn't interested in cricket, he was interested in doing cadets. But when I got there, sometimes he would allow me to even train in my uniform. And you know, so he always remembers that. But uh, personally, I mean, uh, afterwards, when I, after coming back and everything, I woke up, I saw him and he remembered me. You know, young, young thing, all, and he's talking about all these exploits and stuff. And then I remember I had an experience one day with him where I didn't feel like going into the, uh, uh, the stand to play the music. So I went into the, what they call the George Chandler stand, and it was sparse, so I, I got a seat by myself. Suddenly I found, I had a company left and a company right. I hear you shout, one was uh, Everton and the other was Don Norville. And I asked them, what happened? Because there's so many seats around. They said, well, today's your day off. We will entertain you today. <laughs> and he told them, tell me jokes the whole day. I mean, and stories, stories that were difficult to believe too, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's the type of guy, he was like very witty, very intelligent, extremely intelligent. And then what amazed me to it, another thing I must tell you, when we were leaving, he, we, he was leaving and people were shouting, Everton, Everton, Everton. And he would, he would just say, um, hello, how and, and talk to him for like seconds and move on. And I started wondering because when I in town, I have difficulty moving. I used to take half hour to get from Piquet, I'm sure he bust down, you know. And, um, and I started to wonder, how is he doing it? And when I paid attention, he was taking over the conversation. Whereas I would try to get away by saying, go, go, and never call me back. He would run to them, say, hello, hello, how are you? Um, um, stay hello to your family, stay hello to your uncle. And he gone on, and he'll feel good. So later on, I asked him about it, but this, does he know these people? He said, no, I don't know them. I said, but you said the uncle. He said, everybody has an uncle. <laughs> so I mean, he was that smart in every, in every aspect of life. During the tribute to his former workmate and godfather, Assistant Director of the National Sports Council, Adrian Donovan, remembered Sir Everton for his dry wit and refreshing humour, recalling a memorable trip to a financial institution. I can now finish with you saying that on a visit to the mine, we'll be waiting to be seen by a manager. A visitor spotted Sir Everton and wanted his autographs. There was a young Belgian boy who overheard the conversation and wanted to know if the three W's that he heard about being discussed was the three branches of Western Union. The little lad informed us that the branches were at Sheraton, Sky Mall, and Caroline House. So everybody could only laugh, and what a laugh he had. He called the little lad over, shook his hand, and he told him, when you go home, tell your parents you met the man from Western Union. That was the kind of person of some living individual that we should all remember his as. Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, was the author of Sir Everton's biography, Mastering the Craft. Sir Everton was one of the greatest revolutionaries of our Caribbean world because he deliberately designed a method to turn this history upon his head. He was a disturber of the colonial peace that denied any justice. He emerged as a dignified man representing everything he was not meant to be. If ever a bat became a bridge, if ever a bat became a beacon, if ever a bat became a button, it was the bat in the hands of Everton the course of weeks. Cultural Ambassador Dr. Anthony Gabby Carter paid tribute to Sir Everton in song.
Following the official farewell at Kensington Oval, Sir Everton was reunited with Sir Frank and Sir Clyde, being laid to rest on the westerly side of the Walk of Fame at the 3Ws Oval on the UWI's Cafield campus. Leading the mourners, Lane Reefs at the graveside were Prime Minister Mia Motley, members of Sir Everton's family and several members of the cricketing fraternity. Sir Hilary said the hand of God played a major role in making sure that a fitting memorial to the three W's was erected on the UE's Cafield campus. Well, you know, once we had, once we had Frank, um, and Frank was brought here while Cafield was just beginning in its infancy. There were no buildings around, but the campus was just beginning. And Frank, of course, was the captain. But it was clear to me when I came back here as principal in 2002 that the logic of history would be that the three W should be together. It would be a moral crime to have separated the three of them and to imagine that they would have been in a public cemetery somewhere, not being treated the way they should have been treated and being erased from history over time because you do need a constant reminder in order to keep their memory sharp. If the memory is not stimulated from time to time with images, it does deteriorate. So having the, having the three of them here together, it seemed that it was an act of God. As famous English cricket writer Neville Cardus once penned, we remember not the scores and the results in after years. It is the men who remain in our minds, in our imagination. Sir Everton, the Corsi Weeks, 1925 to 2020. Adriel Richard, Nation News, Bridgetown.